Hey everyone, Joey here. And today we're going to be doing a full setup guide for Azahar, the best 3DS emulator on PC. And we're going to talk about how to install it, set it up, add cheats, 60 FPS cheats, HD texture packs, mods, and more. I actually just did this video for Android a few weeks ago, and I got a lot of comments asking about PC. So here you go. Today, we're doing PC. Now, if you're already using another emulator on PC, like Citra, for example, which is older, you can go ahead and back up the cheats, load, and SDMC folders from Citra, and you can find them in your app data roaming Citra folder. If it's not Citra and it's Lime3DS, it's in the same spot, it's just called Lime3DS. The cheats folder has your cheats and 60 FPS cheats, the load folder has your HD textures and mods, and your SDMC folder has all of your saves, your updates, and your DLC for all of your games. One last thing before we get started, and you're going to need to have some 3DS games, obviously, because this is a 3DS emulator and you can't do much unless you have games. Now, a major difference with Azahar compared to Lime 3DS and Citra is the games need to be in CCI format. Now, if you already have your games and they were decrypted already, then they're likely in 3DS format. It's pretty simple in that case. You just rename 3DS to CCI for all of your games and your set. And I do mean you just rename the extension. That's all you have to do. Now, if you don't have any games or your games aren't decrypted 3DS games, which you'll know when you try and boot them up in Azahar and they don't load, then the ROMs GitHub is a great resource and you're going to want decrypted 3DS ROMs. Those are also going to come as a 3DS file format so you just need to rename them to CCI. Just a reminder that you do have to unzip your ROMs, they cannot be zipped. As far as decrypted updates and DLC go, those are a bit harder to find, but Zipper2 can help you. Just uh, use an ad blocker and make sure that you're actually getting the decrypted stuff. I'm going to show you how to install updates and DLC today as well. As far as where you can store all of this, you can simply just create a folder called ROMs and then create a folder inside and I just call it N3DS and put all of your games, updates and DLC and everything inside of that. And that's the best way to organize it. All right, so let's go ahead and actually install Azahar now. And you can grab the latest update right from their GitHub releases. Download the Azahar hyphen whatever version number hyphen windows hyphen msys2 installer exe option. Run the installer and choose where to install it. I usually just leave it as default so you can do that too unless you have somewhere special you want to put it. Head inside of wherever you installed it to and then open the Azahar exe whenever you're ready. The default is your program files location. First order of business is telling Azahar where our games are. So double click and then navigate to that N3DS folder that we created with all of your games inside of it and then select it. And you're gonna see that Azahar starts to populate with all of your games. So at this point, for those of you that backed up from Citra or Lime 3DS or anything else, we can now restore those files and folders. So what you wanna do is go to the top left in Azahar, file, open Azahar folder. And you're gonna see here, we have the cheats folder, we have a load folder, and we have the SDMC folder. Now, if you backed those up or whichever ones you backed up of the three, delete them from Azahar, then copy over your folders to here. Close and reopen Azahar, and you should have your updates, your DLC, your cheats, whatever, already installed into Azahar at this point. Now, we have to do some settings. So head to emulation at the top and then configure. First things first, let's turn off confirm exit while emulation is running. Basically, if we leave this on, every time you try and exit a game, it's gonna pop up with a pop-up saying, are you sure you want to leave? And stop bothering me. Yes, I'm sure I wanna leave. Otherwise, head to graphics on the left. And depending on how powerful your PC or device is, you can change the upscaling now. So for a 1080p display, I usually use 5X 
That usually works pretty well, and my PC can handle it. But I can show you how to do this on a per game basis in case you're using a lower powered PC. Now another option here is disable right eye rendering, and that gives you a nice FPS boost in some games, but it can also cause glitches in other games. It is a good option to test out on a per game basis, and again, we'll look at that later. Go ahead and enable Use Custom Textures and Preload Custom Textures. Head over to the Layout tab and you can choose the default screen layout now, which we're going to look at the options in a little bit. Just remember this spot because you might want to come back here to create your own layout and you can do that here if you want. Head to Advanced and in most cases, I would suggest that you use Vulkan instead of OpenGL and also make sure that the physical device is your graphics card, if you have one. You might have issues with Vulkan instead of OpenGL, so remember that you can change this on a per game basis as well. And again, we'll talk about that. Go ahead and enable Async Shader Compilation to help shaders sync smoother. Head over to Controls now on the left, and you can map your controls for your controller to each button. Alternatively, it might be easier just to do the Auto Map button at the bottom, and it'll recognize your controller right away. So you just click it, you push a button, and it should map your controller properly. If not, just map each individual button yourself. Now in the Hotkeys tab, unfortunately, this is another emulator where all the hotkeys are only available on the keyboard and nothing via the controller. So feel free to make note of them all if you like and you have an easy access keyboard next to you. Click OK at the bottom when done. Now I promised per game settings, so go ahead and right click a game and choose properties. Any changes that you make in this window will only apply to this specific game. So if you head to the enhancements tab, you can change the resolution or disable right eye rendering. You can also change layouts for specific games. So maybe you have a single screen game that never uses the dual screen. You can change that here. Graphics, you can change on a per game basis and so on. This is also where you're going to find the cheats menu for each game, but we're going to talk about that later. Double click a game to boot it, and if you look at the view tab, you can turn on full screen here. You can also adjust the screen layouts, so let's take a look at the options now. Single screen is just a large screen. Large screen is a large and second screen that's still visible. Side by side is putting them side by side. Separate windows is useful for putting each screen on a different monitor, or maybe you have one of those dual screen devices. Hybrid screen will show both screens and a third copy. And then custom layout will use your own custom layout that you can create in that layout section that we talked about before. Now I would turn off single screen mode under view, because if you do, any games launched will now open in their own window. And what happens if you don't turn this off is when you exit a game, it'll exit as a hard two. But that gets annoying when sometimes all you want to do is exit the game and start another game. And then you have to go all the way back to program files or your desktop and click Azahar. So just avoid all of that and turn off single screen mode. Let's talk about cheats now. There is a handy GitHub with cheats for pretty much every game. And I'm going to link that in the description. And if you head there and then you click the cheats folder, you're going to see a whole list of games. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to Pokemon Ultra Sun. And there is only one option, but you do want to make sure that whatever game you're looking at, you are choosing the right region for, because there are different regions for some games. Now, once you click it, you're going to see a text file inside. Click that and then go to the right and choose download raw. It's going to download a text file. Now you just need to move that to the cheats folder. So open Azahar and then go to top left, go to file, open Azahar folder. You're going to see the cheats folder here. Copy and paste that text file into the cheats folder. Now just go to whatever game. So Pokemon Ultra Sun for me, right click, properties and scroll over to the cheats menu. You should see all of them available and ready to go. Now, if you don't make sure that the cheats file name matches the title ID of the game in properties. If it doesn't, it means you downloaded the wrong file. Basically, you probably got the region wrong. Now, if you load the game, you can also find the cheats menu at the top through emulation, then configure current application window. 
So you have multiple ways to get to cheats. All of this applies to 60 FPS cheats as well, since they are just cheats. There is a nice repository of 60 FPS cheats on GBA Temp, so find the game that you want to use 60 FPS for. I'm going to do Pokemon Ultra Sun again. And now if you click it, you're going to see codes depending on the version of the game that you have. So whatever update you're using. Since we haven't installed any updates yet, all games that I have are version 1.0. To add the cheats, head to the game that you're getting cheats for. So Pokemon Ultra Sun. And I want 60 FPS. Right click, properties, cheats tab, click add cheat. Give it a name. So I'm going to call it 60 FPS. Head back to GBA temp, copy the actual code part, and then paste that into the code part of the cheat window. Click save, enable the cheat, and then click OK. Now if you boot up the game, I can tell instantly that it worked and we're in 60 FPS. Next up, we have HD texture packs. Reminder again that you need to have enabled custom textures in the settings, which if you've been following along, we did that earlier. You're also going to notice it tells you right there where to put your HD texture packs. So you don't have to guess, it tells you right there. And it is right in that load textures folder. Now finding HD texture packs is quite difficult, but there is an awesome guy named Henrico Magnifico who does awesome Zelda ones. So let's use that for the tutorial. All of this is in the description once again, but scroll through his Patreon to get to the Ocarina of Time 3D HD texture packs, and then use the download link in the post. You do need to have a Patreon account, but you don't need to be subbed to him. You should though, to support his work. There is two options, 4K or 1080p, and for most people, 1080p will probably be fine, but I'm just going to grab the 4K option because why not? Click download on whichever one you want, and then go ahead and extract whichever zip file you downloaded. Head inside of that extracted folder, then go inside of the OOT3D 4K folder, user, load, textures, and now if you're using the NTSC version of the game, it would be the folder that ends in 500 that we want. Ignore what that text file says, it is unfortunately not correct. Now head to Azahar and find the game and right click, open, custom texture location. You're going to see the title ID and we're in the folder. So head inside of that folder for the HD texture pack that we extracted and copy all of the files that you see inside and then paste them into the window where you had Azahar open the texture folder. Let it finish transferring and you're going to know it worked instantly when you boot the game as you're going to see a side window pop up with preloading textures. But you'll also know when you head into the game and you see the title screen and it says 4K. Now before we talk about mods, I want to show you how to add updates and DLC like I promised. We talked about where to get this earlier, but a reminder that they do need to be decrypted or it's not going to work. Once you have your updates and DLC, which are going to be in a CIA file format, go to File, Install CIA, and then select all of them. Now I only have one here, and you're going to know that it works if you check the icon of the game and it says the version number right next to it. It is hard to see, but it is the easiest way to tell. Lastly, I promise to show you mods. Let's use a pretty popular example, Pokemon Photonic Sun or Prismatic Moon. These are both ROM hacks based on Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but the process for installing mods is going to work for anything that you need to install mods for. Now in this scenario, the developer says that you need to have a Pokemon Ultra Sun or Moon game, which we do, and it needs to be on update 1.2, which we just did if you've been following. Both of these things are things that you could do following earlier parts of today's guide. And again, we just installed that update a few minutes ago. Now we're going to go to their download link in the Poka community post and choose Moon or Sun for whichever game you have. I have Sun. And then we want to download the standard or rebalanced zip in this case. Now this depends on whichever version of the ROM hack you want. I'm going to grab the rebalanced version. Extract that zip. Head inside of that extracted zip folder, then inside of the Luma folder, Titles, and then you're going to see the title ID folder, and inside of that is what we want. Now, head back to Azahar and find the game. Right-click, open, 
mods location. Copy the files from that ROM hack, which are ROMFS and code IPS, and paste them into that folder that Azahar opened for us, where the mods are. Go ahead and start Pokemon, and you're going to know it worked because the text will say Welcome to Photonic Sun right in the beginning. But again, the process for mods is all the same as what we just did. Lastly, how do you update Azahar when there is a new release? Well, it's actually really easy. Nothing is actually stored in that emulator folder in Program Files. So just rename your old Azahar folder in Program Files or wherever you installed it to Azahar underscore old. Then head to GitHub or download the new update EXE, install it like you did in the beginning of the video, and everything will work like it did before. And you can test it. You can then just delete the old Azahar folder whenever. That should be just about it for today. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of, and you should be able to do anything that you want in Azahar now using today's guide and the different timestamps. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro gaming. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.